Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing out there today? We are here. We are here. And we are ready to talk to you guys. I have hope everybody's Saturday is starting off great today. We are excited to be with you guys today. Outside today. Yeah, we decided to change the scenery a little bit for you guys. So y'all let us know um, if you can hear us. Let us know um, the video quality. Let us know because we're trying something new today. So, I just wanted to check the quality of the sound really quick, guys. That's all I wanted to do. Just check the sound quality, the video quality. So, as you guys are coming in, make sure you like and share. Like and share as you guys are coming in. Like and share. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So we're about to go ahead and share this right now. We are going to share this broadcast. Good morning to everyone that's coming in. Good morning. We are so excited to be with you guys this morning. We're coming in from a different um, scene. So you guys let us know if you can hear us. Let us know if the video quality is good because we're trying something new. Trying something new. So as you're coming in, like and share for us. Like and share. I hope everybody's Saturday is going well so far. It's only 11.15. On this beautiful Saturday morning. It's crazy that July is almost over. Mm-hmm. Lord. Yeah. This year went by kind of fast, I think. I think it went by kind of fast. But some good things have been happening in 2021. So to God be all the glory, y'all. To God be all the glory. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As you guys are coming in, make sure you like and share this video. Because we got a good topic to talk about today. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you can see, we're going to be talking about power couples and relationship goals. Yeah, power, power couples, couples and relationship goals. So we're ready to talk to you guys. We are ready to talk. So... You guys just come on in and share this video. Share, share, share. All right. So uh, for those of you who are joining in or you come across this video and you don't know who we are, my name is Katrina. I'm Fred. And we are Marriage God's Way. Uh, we are marriage mentors. We do uh, couple mentors as well as premarital mentorship. And uh, we just want to see your marriage successful. We just want to see you winning in this in this thing called marriage, right? Right. So that's who we are. If you guys um, come across this video and you're like, who are these people? That is who we are. We're located in Charleston, South Carolina. And we're just here just to answer any questions that you guys may have from time to time or whatever. So that's who we are. Absolutely. You can always come to the um, the Marriage God's Way page, get mm -hmm. your daily marriage motivation. Yep. Every single day we try to post something to encourage and to inspire um, and to equip your marriage to be great and to do it God's way. So uh, we're going to get into the topic today. Uh, um, you know, it's it's a it's an interesting topic we're talking about uh, power couples and relationship goals. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's here heard about relationship goal, relationship goals or goals. You know, that's like the hot trending thing that's going on now. 
So we kind of wanted to address it. We kind of wanted to take it head on today. Yeah, I mean, these are these are both two terms that are uh, very, very uh, well known in pop culture, you know, and um, you, we've all heard it. Um, but today we want to kind of want to discuss it. You know, um, what is what is a power couple? You know, what is a power couple? You know, oftentimes uh, people are labeled power couples. Uh, when I looked it up. Uh, what I found is that a power couple is generally defined as uh, like the epitome of what people would desire mm -hmm. um, in a relationship. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and it's often, you know, two uh, powerful people, two rich people, two famous people that come together and link up mm -hmm. and then they get labeled as a power couple. A power couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, you know, that, that's, that's the perception, uh, that a lot of people have of, of a power couple, but, you know, of course we know that you don't have to be rich and famous. You don't have to be, you know, uh, unknown around the world to be a power couple. I think, I think for me, like a power couple is when two individuals that are, um, uniquely gifted um, and in, and that come together and they make each other better. That's that's, right. what, that's what it means. That's what it means to me. That's right. Yeah. Um, and so the other term is relationship goals, right? Yeah. Relationship goals and uh, relationship goals is is a phrase that it refers to, um, you know, either a romantic action or a romantic couple. Uh, that you view, that you that you want to emulate, that you someday want to achieve. You know, mm -hmm. we say goals, goals, hashtag goals, goals or relationship goals. You mm -hmm. know, um, and again, I think that that oftentimes people, you know, we all look for different people for inspiration or you know for admiration and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you gotta be careful. You got to right. be careful because sometimes that can, in, in a sense, lead you into uh, comparison. Mm -hmm. And if you start comparing yourself uh, to other people, start comparing your marriage to other marriages, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it, it can it can leave you feeling like, well, what am I missing or what am I lacking? Right. Especially in this in this social media world that we have, you know, um, because one thing that that is a truth and that is a fact is that people put the good side of their life on social media. I do. Right? You're not going to see um, the ups, the downs, the, the bad, right? And the ugly. Yep. You're going to see the power couple that you think that you're looking at, you know? <laughs> you're going to see that. Yeah, because people are not going to put the other side of marriage and the other side of what they have going on in their life on social media. They're not going to post, you know, oh, you know, we barely had money to pay our bills this month. <laughs> you know, they're going to post when they get a new car. Right. <laughs> exactly. They're going to post when they get a new car. They're not going to post. Um, the total reality Come on. of their relationship, of their marriage. They're going to post date night. Right. They're going to see them uh, date night boot up. You right. Know, date night. But they ain't going to post uh, just, they, got out of a, just got out of an argument for two hours. Right. Or they've been sleeping in separate <laughs> bedrooms. They've been sleeping in separate bedrooms for a month. Right. You know, so people are not going to post that side of their life on social media. So we just wanted to come on here and, you know, just kind of talk to you guys about the power couples and relationship goals. Because we don't want you guys to fall into the trap of thinking um, that what is portrayed on social media is what a power couple or relationship goal is supposed to look like. Because that's a false reality. Yeah. Right. And, you know, from time to time, you know, it's it's flattering. It's humbling. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. from time to time, people will comment on something that they see with us or, you know, they'll say goals or, you know, like we said, relationship goals. Mm -hmm. And all, all that is it's cool. It's it's admirable. But, you know, we we understand that we point that glory right back to God, right. because if it, if it was not for God, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Come we wouldn't on. be doing what we do. Um, um, none of that. And so we want to talk to you today about what, 
what really makes a couple a power couple? Because it ain't about what Hollywood says. That's right. It's not what social media. It's not what the blue app. The blue app says. It's not what Instagram shows. Mm -hmm. It's it's none of those things. We want to talk about what really makes a true power couple. That's, That's right. what we're gonna talk about. So today. we about to get into it, y'all. Remember, if you're just coming on, um, like and share. You can even tag some people. Like, share, and tag some people. Because we want this to we want this to be a discussion. We want to talk to y'all today. So let's talk, guys. All right. So um, number one, the number one thing that real power couples do, mm -hmm. um, they understand and they know that they have to secure the bag, but they also know to secure the oil. Mm. Secure the bag and, and secure, secure the, the oil. oil. Right. So here's the thing. It's good to go after the bag. Come on. I mean, we suggest it, right? Right. We suggest going after the bag. We suggest putting your gifts to work. We suggest working on the job um, that you may love working on. You know, we suggest going after the bag. We suggest investments. We suggest um, setting your, your family up financially um, secure for the future. But at the same time... Right we suggest securing the oil. And what does this securing the oil mean? That means your relationship with God. Mm. Your relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, securing the bag is not going to bring total satisfaction. The Bible says that money answers all things. And, right. it's, and it's the fact. You have money, you can live more comfortable. True. You know, and, and, and a lot of people, they say more money, more problems. But if you have money, you can live more comfortable. Listen, I'll take money problems over <laughs> problem problems. <laughs> right. So if you have money, you can live more comfortable. But at the end of the day, a lot of people are not even still satisfied. Um, and they may have outer happiness, but that inner peace and that inner joy is not found yeah. because... They don't have that relationship with God. Yeah. So secure the bag and secure the oil. Yeah. And it, and it, and and so really, really, you know, you got to secure the oil first, mm -hmm. right? First, and then secure the bag, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to flip the order. You know, one thing that Matthew six and thirty three says in, in the scriptures it says, "Seek ye first That's right. the kingdom of God That's right. and His righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. And wow. then all these things will be added, added unto you." Like when you seek God first, mm -hmm. we're talking about power couples. What makes a real power, power couple? couple. Yeah. You know, you got to know to secure the oil and, and secure, secure the, the bag. bag. That That's looks right. like keeping God first. Real power couples keep God first. That's right. They understand the place that God holds, that like he's everything. Mm -hmm. He has got to be first. He is foremost. Real power couples, they pray together. That's right. Come on. When's That's the last right. time you and your spouse prayed pray together. together? I know you got a relationship with God on your own. I know that you, you know, you worship on your own. But when is the last time that you prayed together? together power couples real power couples they pray together and they seek god for their next move Ooh, that's good you know they seek god for their next move yeah you know power couples defined by the way of the word of god is seeking god for your next move for your next move we're not just out here blindly going about in our marriage and moving yep. without seeking God for our next move. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Because we in ourselves, the, the Bible says that there's a way in, that seems right unto man. We ourselves, we might see an opportunity or we would see something that looks good. But in reality, it's not the will of God for you to move. And, you know, you may find yourself in, in a hard place because you moved without consulting God. Yeah. And, and and what I love about that, too, is, you know, putting God first, seeking him, uh, trusting the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding and all thy ways, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. And then he will what direct, direct your, your path. path that's found in the book of Proverbs, yeah. um, you know, and and. And what I love about that is that, you know, when you are securing the oil, mm -hmm. right, and you're putting God first, 
He then allows you, he leads you into your wealthy place. Oh, he leads my, my. you into your blessed place. He leads me into the green pastures. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, securing securing the oil, but securing the bag. Um, when we're talking about securing the oil, you know, like also I need God's character. I need God's character Ooh. in me in order to love you the right way. Because the, the fact that the matter mm. is, if we secure the bag, Right. But not the oil, Come and on. we don't get his character. Come on. It is character that is going to keep us in the place of wealthiness. Yes. It, it is God's character that's going to keep us in the place of wealthiness. Because we can become wealthy mm. as far as financially and securing the bag. But your integrity is not, if your integrity is not intact, you're not going to remain there. Jesus. <laughs> That's good. You're not going to remain there. That's There's going good. to be things that are going to be pulling at your flesh because you have the money. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of people that have money that has secured the bag. They have these issues that pull at their flesh. And we all have issues that pull at our flesh. But because we're rooted and grounded in God, we don't allow that to overcome us. Good. Awesome. Man. That, yeah, and that's, that, is, that is so true because... Um, what what sense would it be to have success, mm -hmm. have all this money, have all this accomplishments, mm -hmm. but then your marriage fail, mm. but then your family is is, is is broken? You know Man. what I mean? I gotta we gotta have both. Man. And and once you secure the oil, then then you can focus on you know those things like you know um, thinking about your next move and thinking mm. about uh, streams of income mm. and thinking about different ways to invest. And uh, cause your money to start working for you. We were just having a conversation about yeah. that the other day. Yeah. About um, how we want to finish strong financially. Mm -hmm. That's you know? Right. And I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. The, the next one. So I'm going to just want to interject. Do not forget you have to secure the oil. Yeah. And then secure the bag. In that order. In that order. <laughs> In that order. The next one, um, real power couples, the ones we label as relationship goals. They are, there are certain things that they do mm -hmm. that, that, that make them um, admirable. The next thing that I think that, that uh, real power couples do is that they make each other a priority. That's right. They make each other a priority. Yeah. Um, when you talk about making each other a priority, what, what comes to your mind when you think about that? I, I think about meeting each other's needs. Yeah. You know, meeting each other's needs, um, doing away with selfishness. Yep. And just thinking about the other person. Yeah. Just thinking about the other person over over yourself, making them a priority. Yeah. You know? That's good. Yeah. That's good. You know, when I think about, um, you know, priority, you'll be surprised um, how many things that we allow to become a priority mm. over our marriage mm -hmm. and and we don't recognize it because it's so subtle we don't recognize it because it's like it's it happens inadvertently mm -hmm. and before you know it we are placing things before our spouse whether it be a job, uh, a job you mm -hmm. know career pursuit whether it be your hobby mm -hmm. whether it be your outside friends mm -hmm. or you know uh, um, children. Children. Wow, that's yeah. that's one. You know, you love your children, and and you got to be there for your children. But you cannot make your children a greater priority than your marriage. Mm -hmm. And people do that. They do. They do that. Yeah, they do. So you know, oftentimes when securing the bag, people have a hard pursuit of doing that, mm -hmm. and that makes areas in their life. Um, you know, some areas in their life go lacking, but we got to have a balance. We have to have a balance. You know, we can't, you know, pursue the bag so hard and then neglect our spouse and our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and same thing, you know, some people actually pursue the oil. You know, they secure the oil so hard, too, now that they neglect, yeah. you know, you find that more in the older church. You know, with with the seasoned um, saints, yeah, they secure their relationship with God above all. Like they'll be in church, and their spouse will not be in church, and mm -hmm. you know, just things like that. And you yeah, know. you can put you can put church before before your spouse. Yeah. There's plenty of people um, 
um, that have made ministry the priority. Yeah. And then they neglected home. Mm -hmm. And so you, you know, you prophesy, you know, you, you preach, you know, you do all of these great things for church. But if you don't invest in your house, That's right. this is why sometimes powerful people, uh, anointed people, mm -hmm. men and women of God, they end up in divorce court. And you're like, yeah. how is it possible for somebody of that caliber or yeah. somebody of that stature of that great, that greatness mm -hmm. to end up getting a divorce? It's again, it's again, because priorities become, become out of place. Listen, you know, we, we sometimes, you know, when we go out to dinner, uh, you can look around at certain people mm -hmm. and you find them glued to their phones yep. more than they're paying attention to each other. Yep. That's Thanks. another thing. We talk about priority, you know, like we got to really be careful that we don't allow um, the phones, the, the, the Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter, the Snapchats, all of these things mm -hmm. to steal our attention because there's distractions. Yeah. Um, and and they quite honestly they can really be time wasters you mm -hmm. know we, we we talked about that too that we're mm -hmm. gonna intentionally uh put more time into into each other rather than television or entertainment or social media and you got to do that you have no, to do there's, that there's too much information out here now uh for couples to succeed in every area of their life but we just have to be intentional about putting in the time. Right. And the right. effort. You know, so much grabs for our time and divides our divide our time and and you know, take our take away valuable time. Yep. But time is something that we cannot get back. I mean, we know that the Bible says that God will restore the years that the canker worm and the and, you know, the and the locust ate up. But at the same time, <laughs> God is giving us time to use wisely. Yeah. You know, he's given us time to use wisely. And we shouldn't take the time that God has given us for granted. So invest in your marriage. Invest in your children. Invest your time wisely yeah. while we have it. That's good. You know? Because, I mean, time is probably the most precious commodity that we have. Mm -hmm. Even more than money. Oh, yeah. You know, time is so valuable. Um, and I, I love that. And so so sometimes you got to put the phones away. Mm -hmm. Another thing that uh, power couples, those relationship goals, another thing that they do often is that they they date often. They yeah. make they make marriage a priority. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be too busy to not spend time with you. I'm not going to be so busy that we don't date, you right. know. Um, and if you're uh, I know a lot of couples and if they when they stop dating, they stop being best friends. Yeah. When they stop dating, they stop having uh, the romance mm -hmm. and the spark. Mm -hmm. The romance and the spark dies when you stop dating because you can move into a place where you are in roommate mode yeah. more than you're in lover mode. That's that's a fact, and it happens more often than than what we know. Yeah. You know. Um, so we just want you guys to remember to put your marriage and your family, make it a priority. Absolutely. You know, don't put it on the back burner. We want to see you guys succeeding and winning in every area of your life. So do not put it on the back burner. Make it a priority. You know, you have to tend to and care for what God has given you. Right. And that starts with making your marriage and your family a priority. Yeah. And and the last thing I'll say on this is that sometimes you have to readjust. Uh, you have to readjust your priorities mm -hmm. because sometimes when things have gotten out of whack and out of place, you got to come back and 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 make some tweaks and and really uh, find out what do I value the most mm -hmm. and then and then make some tweaks. Like I've been I've been too involved with with this activity or I've been too connected to family or yeah. I've been too. Uh, invested in focusing on just the kids mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever, even, even if it's church, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, sometimes you got to come back and really just tweak and evaluate your priorities. Because like, like uh, the word of God says, uh, where your, where your treasure is, yeah. that's where your heart will be. Also, you that's can right. tell 
you can tell if your marriage is a priority. You can mm-hmm. tell if your marriage has your heart. If your heart is really on your spouse, if your heart is really in your marriage, because your priorities will be in alignment with mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So that's right. And don't don't allow your ego or allow you know stubbornness to not make you um, put down those things that are causing you to put your family um, and and your relationship with God second. Right. You know, don't allow pride, don't allow stubbornness, don't allow your ego to not make you drop those things, yep. you know, because at the end of the day, you know, you, you will be able to, if God, if that's in God's will to go back and pick those things up, but you can't allow your marriage and your relationship with God to, um, you know, suffer because you choose not to let those things go. Yeah. Good. I love yeah. it. I love it. Next one, y'all. Next one. Um, that power couples, mm-hmm. relationship goals, mm-hmm. what they do. This is something that they do. They um, they create goals and they have a vision. That's right. That's right. You guys, and I'm just going to interject really quick. If you're just coming on or you, you know, come across this video, share this video, um, tag some people. Um, like our page, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we are here to give you guys, um, some help. That's, that's what we're here for. So we want you, if you're coming on to share this video, tag someone, you know, cause we're just here to give you guys some insightful tools. Yeah. So they, they create, they create goals and they have vision. Yep. You know, uh, they create goals together. Let me say that. They create goals together Mm -hmm. because creating goals together uh, is so important to 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 have a sense of where you're going, Mm -hmm. have a sense of where you want to be. So many times, you know, we get in marriage and we just get on autopilot. Yeah. Go to work, come home, say a few words, you know, take care of the kids, Mm -hmm. eat dinner go to bed and then do it all over again Mm -hmm. because you know one of the one of the um desires that 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 women particularly have is they look for men a man their husband Mm -hmm. to take initiative and to take leadership Mm -hmm. in 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 areas of the home Mm -hmm. and um so you got to lay out from time to time you got to lay out those goals you got to lay out that vision you you know I, I, I take it upon myself, you know, sometimes I got to evaluate and make sure that I'm leading well mm-hmm. as a husband and as a man. Am I leading well? Um, you know, if, my, if, we're, if we're getting off focus or something's not right, it is up to me to take initiative mm-hmm. to, try to, to try to bring that thing back into order. Yeah. Make sure that we're always, you know, moving towards our vision and our goals. That's right. And, and when we create goals together... We are that much more powerful. We are that much more stronger. Because if my goal, if I got goals over here and mm-hmm. you got goals over there, and we're next thing you know, we're pulling in two different directions. That's right. And this happens with people that they, this is when you see people who uh, uh, they'll be married for 15, 20 years, mm-hmm. 30 years. They raise the kids mm-hmm. together and then they get a divorce you know, later in life. And it's mm-hmm. like, what is that? What, how did that happen? Mm-hmm. How did, how did y'all survive for 20 something years and 30 years and then get a divorce? Right. Right. That's the power of agreement. Come yes. into agreement with the vision for your marriage. Oh man. Come into agreement. And then you guys can move in the same direction. You guys can move, you know, towards that one end goal. Right. You know, set financial goals. Come on. You know what I'm saying? How how do you how do you see your family being set up for the future? You know how do you see what are you going to leave for your children? You know set and 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 we do pre marital mentorship and and in our pre marital mentorship one of the courses that we um, teach is about financial um, security. Right. You know and we we teach on that we teach about investments we teach about um, life insurance we teach about you know. Um, what else is, is in there? Um, oh, how to, you know, balance your, you know, your checking account and, you know, making sure, you know, you're good in that area. We, we teach about these things because it's important. Right. 
It's important in marriage that you have a financial goal. It's important in marriage that you have a spiritual goal. It's important in marriage that you have a goal for, you know, for your your children. It's important that you're not just out here aimlessly, you know, your marriage can run on autopilot. It can. Can. But you're not going to um, excel. You're not going to go any higher than where you're at. You're just going to be coasting. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? And we want you guys to change your mindset. We want you to get into the mindset that, no, we're not just going to coast. We're going to see acceleration in our marriage. Acceleration. We're going to see acceleration. We're going to we're wow. going to pursue more. We're going to do more together. We're going to pursue more. And that only comes... When, when you have a vision and when you have a goal set yeah. before you. Yeah. You know, a runner, a runner, they they go hard when they can see that finish line. Like yep. if you're doing long distance, like you, you know, you coasting, you know, you doing, you know, you, you know, you pacing yourself. Right. But when you get to that finish line, when you see when you see that finish line and when it's in your sight, when it's in your view, you push harder. Push harder. You push harder to obtain that goal because you want that medal. Yeah. You want that trophy. You want the win. Yeah. So you push even harder when you see that that line in the front of you. And so that's what we want you guys to do. We want you to set the goal, set you, you know what your vision before you, so that you can run even harder to obtain it. Yeah. You know. And it's so rewarding. It is so rewarding when you as a couple, when you as a marriage, where you set a goal and you watch God fulfill that thing. Mm-hmm. You set a target and you watch God bring it to pass. You yes. know, you, you come into agreement. You've been praying about it. You've been working on it. Mm-hmm. And when you when you see that thing come to fruition, it's it's a blessing. And then, like I said, it brings you all the more closer. So, mm-hmm. man, they, they power couples, they 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 have goals, mutual goals, and they set vision, mm-hmm. you know, for for their relationship. That's right. Yeah, so we want you guys to do that. Please, please, please pursue the vision for your marriage. And if you don't already have that, talk about it. Yep. Get together and talk about it. Say, look, I heard Freddie Katrina on this live talking about, you know, setting goals and having a vision. We about to do this. Yeah. You got to be moving towards some kind of purpose. Yeah. You know, God, one one of the, every marriage I believe has purpose. Mm -hmm. Not only do we have purpose individually, Mm -hmm. but our marriages have purpose. There's there's something that God called us to do, something that God called us to be, that he has placed us here to accomplish. And when you find your purpose, that allows you to move towards the goals and move towards those vision, move towards that vision, because it has to be in line with the purpose that God has placed in Mm. you. That there, is so good. There is a certain level of unfulfillment that comes from mm. not knowing why you are here, from not knowing why God put you together. My and when God. you find that and when you tap into that, that is when you really have the truest form of fulfillment, the mm. truest form of joy and and the essence of, of, of purpose. So, so personally, I'm going to just give you guys, personally, I am a better person when I'm functioning in my purpose. Man. Like personally, it's yeah. something that I came to the knowledge of. Yeah. When I'm in my purpose, when I'm working who I am, who God has called me to be, when I'm working it, I'm a better version of me because I am working who he called me to be. Wow. So, you know, get into your purpose and you guys get together as a married couple and work the vision and, and fulfill the purpose that God has given you to fulfill. It's so rewarding. It it's is. so rewarding when you are literally in your purpose, when you are doing what God has called you to do. Yep. And especially as a married couple. That's good, babe. All right, next one, y'all. The next one. We're talking about what real power couples, not what they not what they show you in Hollywood or in right. the music industry, you know, all this other stuff. Stuff that we see on social media. Real mm-hmm. power couples. This is something that they do. They know how to keep it romantic and keep it grown and sexy. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Keep it romantic and keep it grown and sexy. I remember uh, when we first got married, you know, and, you know, there was even people at church. They would try to, you know, they would try to make little comments. They would laugh um, because we would sit by each other Mm -hmm. 
and while we're sitting down in church, you know, whatever, I'll usually have, you know, my hand and your hand or mm-hmm. whatever, holding your hand. Um, you know, I would open the doors, open the doors for you to get in the car, mm-hmm. or different things like that, or pull the car around, you know, for you. And um, people would kind of joke and say, uh, yeah, yeah, you're doing that now. You're doing that now, but wait till a couple years. Mm-hmm. Wait till a couple years, you know, go by. Yeah, hey, y'all cute now, you know, y'all so in love. But, you know, I think that they try to impose, mm-hmm. you know, what, what might be their reality on um, the reality of, of, of our relationship that's right. to say that the good things that you are doing, that is going to end because you're going to get comfortable. You're going to relax. You're going mm-hmm. to uh, not appreciate it once it's not new anymore. But that don't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Now, it does all. happen, but that doesn't have to be your reality. Come on. Just because... You know, people fade away and stop doing things that they used to do in the beginning. That yep. doesn't have to be your reality. It does not. You know, so don't let don't let anybody. You know, if you're newly married, don't let anybody put that on you to say, "Oh yeah, y'all y'all doing that now." That's because you know you, you just got married. Don't don't let anybody put that on you. You don't have to accept those words. Come on. You know, like we just said, set goals. Okay, get a vision for your marriage and work it. Work it. Work it. You know, that doesn't have to be your reality. Yeah. And so when it comes to when it comes to keeping it romantic and keeping it grown and sexy, you know, um, I think that, you know, romance, let's define what romance is, because Mm -hmm. a lot of times people have a misconception about what is romance and what it's all about. And, you know, um, romance is 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 not like what you see on television it's not like what you see on on in romance novels per se Mm -hmm. i think the definition of romance to me is is a gesture of kindness and love um a gesture that lets your spouse know that i am thinking about you Mm -hmm. and that i value our love you know it can be it can be um, the smallest thing. Smallest thing. It don't take a whole lot of money. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take a bunch of uh, fancy planning and all this other stuff. You can be romantic when you just leave a love note for your spouse mm-hmm. um, on the counter or in their car, you know, before they go to work. I mean, you can be mm-hmm. romantic by doing a small gesture, you know, just to say I love you, you know. Um, and and sometimes, you know, you got to find out what your spouse uh, appreciates as mm-hmm. as romantic gestures, mm-hmm. you know. Like my wife, she's not really big on on flowers. You know what I'm saying? Like no, because they're gonna die, and <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep watering them. Yeah. So I mean, roses, roses might work for some people, but mm-hmm. that that may not communicate to other to someone else's heart uh, being romantic. But what I do, the things that I do, I know that she appreciates. You know. Yes. Um, like he fixes my coffee every morning. Before I go to work. Every morning. Like, I don't care what time I have to be to work. He fixes my coffee. Yeah. You know, and I appreciate that. You drinking coffee now? I'm drinking coffee right Who now. Who fixed that coffee? You did. Okay. Just checking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he, ma- he makes the best coffee, so, uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> every morning, though. Every every single morning. And I and I take that. Even though she gets up before me, um, I, I'll wake up. And I'll make sure that I that I do that for her just as a gesture to let her know, you know, hey, babe, I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. I know you like the way I make your coffee. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get up, even though you have to be up before me. I'm going to take the time, wake up, fix it for you the way you like it every single morning to let you know that I love you. Mm-hmm. Let you know that I love you. Yeah, so. keep it grown and sexy. Again, go on date nights. Yes. You know, keep it grown and sexy. Go to a jazz spot. You know, listen to some jazz music. Just keep it grown and sexy. You like you do don't. That. Yeah, you don't have to. Just because we're saved, you know, just because we love Jesus, doesn't mean that we have to have a boring marriage. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's a misconception. That that's a misconception in the church that because we're saved. That we have to have a boring marriage, and that's mm-hmm. that's not true. We we're not going to accept that. <laughs> we're not going to accept that. <clears throat> and um, keeping it grown and sexy, you know, dress up, yes. get dressed up, do something, go out. Tra- yes. Yo, l- listen, look good for one another. Yeah. 
<laughs> look good for one another. Shoot, I be turning down. Listen, I be turning down sweets. I be turning down snacks. I be turning down all this other stuff because, you know, I want my I want my physique. I want my my figure to look good to my spouse. I don't want one of them. Listen, I never wanted that preacher belly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I never want that. Um, and it, like, listen, it's not all about the physicality, but mm-hmm. but you know, there's something to say that about keeping yourself looking nice for groom your yourself. spouse. Yeah, groom yourself, even if it's not about the weight. Just groom yourself. Come on. You know, like for me, I'm I I fell off of exercising. I fell off, you know. I'm gonna get back on one day, Come on. <laughs> but this day I fell off. I told okay, you, I told you said next week. Oh yeah, I did say next week, <laughs> but then next week I'm probably gonna say next week. Ooh. Okay, but I know that he likes when I wear makeup, like lipstick and eyeshadow. Mm. He doesn't care about the foundation, but lipstick and eyeshadow. Right. So you know it. So I do that. You know, I do that. So it's not it's not about necessarily the physical fitness, but groom yourself. Yeah. You know, keep up your appearance. Keep it grown and sexy. This is what power couples do. This is what it means to ever have real relationship goals, not just what social media portrays. Come on. Right? That's it. Yeah, not just what the world put, put out there for us. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, the very last one, y'all, very last one. And then we are, we are getting off here tonight. You know, power couples, another thing that real power couples do, um, is that they push each other and they bring out the best in one another. That's right. Oh my goodness. And how do you do that? Come With on. compliments. Yeah. Right. Compliment each other. Compliment each other. You know, um, another way, another way that we can do this is by, um addressing what is good in your spouse yep as well as speaking on what can be improved on wow you know know in how love. to say it in love right know yeah. how to say it but speaking about what can be improved upon yeah because why are we doing that because we want to see the best version of our spouse come forward yeah you know, Lord we want to see Jesus. the best version of them come forward. So we will, you know, compliment and speak of what is good. But we will also say, babe, I, you know, there's so much more in you. Mm-hmm. you. There's so much more in you. And I believe in you. Wow. I believe that, you know, that you can do this X, Y, Z. I believe that you can do that. Just speaking about the, yeah. you know, just doing that. I remember when we got together. When we first got together, you remember I had like, you know, my one or two go-to suits. Yes. <laughs> I had one or two go-to suits, man. And that's all I had. Mm-hmm. And um, this woman of God right here, mm-hmm. you know, when she got with me, she was like, you know what, babe? Um, I don't want to, I don't want to see you, you know, just in these one or two suits. You know, it's time for you to invest in you and she you know i remember we we went shopping together Mm -hmm. and uh you know i was trying on different suits different clothes and stuff like that and um you know and i I remember i always appreciated that because she cared so much about me that she wanted me to present myself and look better so this woman she made me better Mm -hmm. she made me better she can't you know and and that's what real power couples do they Mm -hmm. make each other better like you good, you bad, you by yourself. But when we get together, That's right. you know, you begin to pull uh, the greatness, pull the greatness out of your spouse. Mm-hmm. And it comes through uh, encouragement, uh, through mutual encouragement. You know, I want her to succeed. Mm-hmm. I want her to be the best version of her that she can be. And and there are times where we won't let each other lay down. We won't let each other quit. Right. We will not let each other quit. Right. And so he did the same for me, but spiritually. Yeah. When we got together, he did the same for me, but spiritually. And he continues to do it even now. You know, he pulls the best version of me out. He pulls, he sees what's what's in me, what God has placed in me. And he pulls it out of me. Wow. You know, and so I did that for him as far as the physical appearance. But he did that for me with this, with the spiritual side of me. Yeah. You know, pull the best version of your spouse out. Man. 
because there's more there's so much more in them yeah and 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 that's how we complement each other mm -hmm. that's how we complement each other and how we make each other better listen real power couples those that we label as relationship goals i promise you they have these elements and they are doing these things that's right and they learn how to complement each other mm -hmm. so that so that you know that uh what's in me you know what is in me um is there's something in me that god designed that god created that is going to inspire and bring out the best in you encourage and bring out the best of you and there's a strength in me that is going to make you complete. That's right. There's a strength in you that's going to make me complete. And you got to find that that area mm -hmm. uh, in your spouse. And when you begin to value what they bring to the table, that makes you even greater. That's that right. makes you even better. That's right. So you guys, I, I just hope that you would take, you know, all that we've said today. We've been on here for 45 minutes. I hope that you would take everything that was said today and just begin to, you know, move forward in your in your marriage. Just begin to excel. You know, get that goal, get that vision before you and go after it. Go after it. Go after it hard. Secure the oil and secure the bag. Wow. Secure the oil and secure the bag. Come on. In that order. In, in that, that order. order. <laughs> you know, make your marriage a priority. You know, make God a priority. Make your family a priority. These are real relationship goals. Right. This is where the real power couples are going to be presented. Yep. Right? It is. It's not what social media shows us. It's not what the world tells us. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, listen, uh, we're, we're grateful. You know, everybody catching this, this video, uh, watching this, just remember... Uh, this is the place where you can get your marriage motivation right here. Marriage mm -hmm. God's way. Mm -hmm. uh, subscribe and like the page. And we're going to be coming on periodically, whether we're praying for marriages, mm -hmm. whether we're speaking like this into marriages on various different topics. Mm -hmm. um, or um, if we're just posting something just to just to just refresh your mind and keep and keep marriage at the forefront of your heart and mind, whatever it is. You know that you can get it right here at My Marriage God's Way. That's right. Because we, we believe that every couple can experience marriage God's way. Right. Right. So we're giving you some tips. We're giving you tools so that you can experience marriage God's way. There is a way. God's way. There is a way. <laughs> All right. And we just... Uh, we love you guys. You know, we uh, we get excited when we have an opportunity to come to you and to speak to you and just speak life into your marriage, right? Just give you, you know, um, new ways of thinking about your marriage, new ways of thinking about about your family. So we we are just excited to sit here and talk to you guys. Well, until next time, I am Katrina. I'm Fred, and we are Marriage, marriage God's God. Way. Wait. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful Saturday. <laughs>